Can you use glyphosate around trees? Yes, but be careful. In this video, I give three tips for avoiding injury to trees from herbicide applications with a special focus on glyphosate. First off, make sure you are not treating suckers of desirable trees. This is a huge problem and people don't realize that the small stems coming out of the base of a tree are actually part of that tree and oftentimes people will treat these suckers just like they would any ordinary weed. Don't do this. Second, don't allow overspray to contact the bark of trees. This is a big problem, much bigger than most people assume. Users of herbicides often assume that the bark is a complete barrier to the infiltration of amine or water-based herbicides. This is not necessarily the case. Hannah Mathers from Ohio State University Extension did research on bark splitting in nursery tree stock back in the early 2000s. She determined that bark splitting was often caused by off-target spray of glyphosate products, especially those with surfactants. Bark splitting is a major problem for the horticultural and nursery industry. It calls, causes multiple millions of dollars in losses every year. The third tip is to avoid flashback, follow two precautions. Now by flashback, I mean the loss of herbicide through the roots of the treated tree. So the target tree or weed loses the excess herbicide through its own roots and that may be taken up by another desirable plant. So the first precaution to avoid flashback is this. Near desirable trees don't use herbicides that contain dicamba, amazapir, piclorem, and 2,4-D. All of these herbicides have been found to cause flashback because they are very active in soils. The second precaution to avoid flashback is this. Near desirable trees don't use application methods that use high amounts of concentrated glyphosate. There are several methods that use very high concentrations and large amounts of glyphosate. But you might say, what about the glyphosate product label? Oftentimes on those labels, you'll find statements such as, this product has no soil activity and thus will not affect nearby untreated plants. However, especially where you are applying large amounts of concentrated glyphosate, be careful. For example, when injecting knotweed, you are sometimes applying as much as five milliliters of glyphosate concentrate per stem. It's easy to conceive of a situation where there might be one or 200 stems within the root zone of a nearby tree. Think of that, you may be applying as much as 500 milliliters or even a thousand milliliters of glyphosate concentrate within that tree's root zone. Inevitably, some of that excess glyphosate will be taken up by the tree. And there is evidence of flashback in these situations. For example, Tim Miller at Washington State University did research on uptake by non-target plants near knotweed. And he found that it did indeed occur. In summary, if you are applying glyphosate or any herbicide near desirable trees. To avoid fl flashback, take these two precautions. First, don't use flashback prone herbicides such as amazapir. Second, 
use precision herbicide application equipment and apply less herbicide overall. In this video, I show an application of herbicide to a number of weed trees located right next to a desirable tree. In this case, the desirable tree is a red oak on the left, the big tree with a lot of bark. And then to the, just the right of it are several buckthorn, common buckthorn, a weed tree. And the application is uh, to all of these buckthorn. And you'll see we're using foam herbicide from my company, Green Shoots, and we're cutting those uh, those trees close to the ground, leaving about an inch above the ground, and then cleaning off all the sawdust on the stump face and applying the foam herbicide directly to the stump face. And in particular, making sure that the application touches the outside or the cambium area or the phloem area of the weed tree. These applications work extremely well. The foam stays in a liquid state for a lot longer than a typical spray. It's also very, very precise, so you get no overspray. None of that herbicide is going to touch the bark of the desirable tree on the left, and almost none of it will drip down the sides of the cut stem.